I might need a cow someday. <laughs> now I gotta find a bull. Here, here, bull. So I guess the uh, rules on spawning animals has has uh, have changed, as was explained by a couple of folks, and uh, they're supposed to be persistent now. So uh, every animal is precious. Hey, look, it casts a little shadow. Have they always done that? You stay there. I actually have another cow that I trapped right down here. How can I get the two of them together? <laughs> that's, that's a project for another time. Mills here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your kind comments on that last video. Ooh, look, an egg. There is a chicken around. Yeah, there he is. Um, yep, a couple of notes. Uh, I understand now that the, uh, the fog at the bottom of the world is on purpose. And that I'm not the only one who doesn't care for it. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, thanks for the uh, advice about... Ooh, there's a pig. About... Uh, a mod to uh, remove it but I'm not gonna do mods just because I'm you know I don't know I don't want to don't want to go through the trouble um, speaking of trouble I haven't done the glass yet uh, but I did do, uh, make one little modification for this recording uh, to the sound of pistons because I wanted to play around with this a little bit uh, on camera and the noise would just become uh, you know intolerable uh, so I actually, um, I actually made the piston noises like really super quiet. They actually are there. It's just, they're so quiet. You can't even hear them. Uh, I'll link to the webpage that showed how to do this, how to edit the sound without it overriding your changes. Um, and as soon as I'm done with the the, this recording, I'll, I'll I'll let the sound go back to the way it was. So it's just mostly for the recording, because as I showed at the end of the last video, I was playing around with this, and it has uh, note blocks. So I wanted to be able to hear the note blocks, and not hear the racket that's created by twelve, yeah, sixteen pistons. Wouldn't be able to hear anything else. So um, this was something that uh, I stumbled along a long time ago before the big break in play that I had. Uh, the The complete path was uh, I ended up uh, all on YouTube videos. Uh, I watched uh, Failure Fox do a retractable uh, lamp post, and in there he uh, links in his uh, description. Uh, two users, uh, one named uh, Omganisha, and the other one is Kimundi2, and just incredible stuff on there. Um, uh, and uh, I need to go to bed, but um, just really, uh, it's so quiet. Oh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know that the sound of doors had changed also. That's how out of the loop I am. Sleep. So yeah, so those uh, those users have some really uh, good videos about using uh, pistons to create essentially a punch card. It's a uh, punch card. Let me get away from the portal here. Dawn has broken. 
So it's a uh, well. One of them is uh, the the uh, Kimundi two video uh, called "Pistons: A Revolution for Redstone Circuitry." Talks about a whole a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, and so and I'd love to dabble in some of it. But the main one that caught my attention was this little uh, this little engine. Oh, I still have to update the lighting on some of this. Okay. So this is a uh, a two-stroke engine. I assume it's two strokes because it goes one, two, one, two. Okay, so what's going on here is that um, a redstone a signal will travel through solid blocks uh, and pass the signal along. So uh, down below are two redstone torches that are always on and that the torch that's below this blue box, uh, block and I made it blue so that I could just talk about it distinctly but it doesn't really doesn't really matter um, what block it is as long as it's something that a piston can move and as long as it's not transparent so the the energy is going from the torch below the blue block block into the blue block and then into this repeater and then it stops there's nothing no further travel. And so uh, this piston that's connected to the switch that you control pushes another solid block in the path and that then energizes the signal and the signal goes on. And in this case it goes and it plays that first note block. But then the signal also goes feeds back over to this piston which then pushes the blue block over to here breaking the connection that existed here all right so it turns that one off but then it creates a new connection here that also then transmits the signal over to the other note block and notice also it sends a signal right back to the uh, the piston itself so you get this ping pong effect And when the blue block is, is in this position here, where the crosshair is, you see that the repeater is energizing the entire circuit here, feeding back into the piston that is holding the blue block and pushing it out of the way. So it like it breaks its own connection. And then it goes on up over here. Now over here, of course, what you do with it is up to you. I specifically was fiddling around with it for uh, music purposes. But here's the other thing you can do with uh, the relays uh, is that you can um, you can change the um, you can change the the timing. Oh, duh. What's happening here is that it's basically eating up two cycles for every one of these, I guess. But even just trial and error. So the output of these things can do anything that you want. Uh, as I said, I was playing specifically with uh, with the um, notes. Let me turn that off. There we go. The other cool thing is that when you hit the switch, it it just naturally stops at the first position here because that's that's where the the signal because the uh, the block is over the repeater that affects the piston that it's right next to. It just breaks the connection and it just stops, and so it's ready to go again, right where it left off. So uh, that's a two-stroke version, and over here there is the four-stroke version. And I don't have note blocks connected to it, but this is just a switch that drops down. And this time I did the uh, the uh, on-off switch goes vertically. 
um, so that there'd be no confusion with the area around it because it's kind of tight there for space. So same idea though, this pink block right here, see the pink block? The pink block is completing the, the circuit. And uh, it's the exact same idea, only they go in a square pattern here. So uh, you can also, uh, why do I always, I always forget. <laughs> there. Um, and now I, now I do have to reset it because I was lame. But you see right now, uh, this, it's, this is engaged and all I have to do is put this on this torch and it'll start up again. But, um, so which one is it? Right mouse. There we go. See, so there's like this little stutter in the middle. Now, if I had the sound on, you could hear how ironic I turned the sound off and now I can't demonstrate something, but uh, you can slow this down. To make it do some interesting, you know, and, and tailor-made timing. So here it is at its slowest because the repeaters are fully extended or fully uh, delayed. And it's just the same thing. The repeater is feeding both uh, an output over here and it's feeding uh, the piston that it's next to so that it engages it, breaks the signal, and then repeat. And it does the exact same thing four times. And really, this the only thing this is is a is a, a, a switch that's inserted in the middle of this point right here. See, so that's the exact same point. It's just that I have the pink block as a switch. All right, so... What's going on here is that the same, this is the exact same four stroke uh, engine that's over there. Only I harnessed the, uh, the outputs. Uh, actually, I, I'm, I'm only using two of the outputs here. Uh, this one, wait a minute, is it two? Hold on a second. Yeah. Now, I don't need all four in order to do this unless I wanted to play with the timing in particular, but I'm only using the output from two parts of this. Uh, this one right here goes up there. And on this side, this one goes up there. So, uh, so there's output that's not being used except just to play with the timing. Like this one right here doesn't go anywhere. And this one here also doesn't go anywhere but you could certainly use that as well all right so same thing with the pink block okay so this business this is uh these are pistons that all fire at the same time and what is happening is uh they're the opposite corners are firing at the same time i should say so okay the signal from here it goes to these pistons here and then to the opposite corner. So that's where these little stair steps go. They go to the opposite corner. So these will push down at the same time that that one there pushes up. So down and up at the same time. And then the same thing goes for the opposite corner over here. This one goes over in this orientation to the left. And the one down here goes to the right. And so it just makes this big, uh, this big loop. Uh, the repeaters. This is just in. This is just to extend the signal. So it's not doing anything special. Although you certainly, I guess you could try that. Although you have to. This gets a little weird, fiddling around with it because you have to make sure that the there's sort of continuity in the whole thing so that you don't create gaps accidentally where the pistons are working against each other and then suddenly they don't have anything to push on. So I. I'm sure you could, with some careful planning, figure out how to avoid that. I my version of careful planning is just trial and error and fiddle around with it until the thing the thing works. So, uh, so you see what's happening there is that the opposite corners, this one and this one, engage at the same time. 
and this one, and this one engage at the same time. And so there's this, there are two gaps in this, uh, in this circuit here. Oh, look at the lighting. I better go to sleep. I'll be right back. All right. I will eat a pork chop. So anyway, uh, the, uh, the, the music itself and the timing of the music has to do with that same principle about the redstone passing through solid blocks but not through transparent blocks. So um, there are three torches here that are always on and uh, they're being fed into repeaters so that they direct the signal straight ahead only. And whenever there's glass in the path, no signal is passed. And then when a block moves uh, in place, it passes a signal and sends it on its way. In this case, onto note blocks. So the signal comes out of here, and then in this it comes and hits this note, and so on. The reason there are two levels here is that uh, I don't want the, t the redstone to get connected across the gap here. I could do that by just having repeaters all lined up, but I don't want to waste the resources to make a whole bunch of repeaters. Um, it's not really necessary. But um, the, uh, speaking of repeaters to play with timing, with the music in particular, that, uh, that can be pretty uh, influential, have quite an impact on the timing but first before i go into that let's see actually the best view for this ufa is not there is uh it's actually here at the note blocks So you can hear and see the white blocks appear. And when all three of them show up here, there's kind of a arpeggio kind of effect. So obviously there's programming involved in getting these to appear at the time that you want. But by the way, you could have a circuit and you know, you can make this really as long as you want. Uh, there is that limit on how many blocks you can push, uh, whatever it is, 12 or something, but uh, there are ways around that too. That's actually what I'm going to play around with uh, next a little bit just to see how far I could push it. But um, but uh, the the timing at which these things uh, hit are then also uh, can be altered or influenced by having the repeaters at different lengths. So like if we delay this... So you see that little trio when all three blocks are in place. This here now is delayed to the point where it is noticeable. Okay, here comes the three block right here. All because of just playing with the timing on this. Let's shorten it. See if we can get these to play at the same time. Here, now we got a little chord. <laughs> I tell you, this is one of the most interesting things I've seen uh, built is this uh, punch card. Uh, the reason it's called a punch card type uh, system is because the, uh, the earliest computers uh, ran on uh, a stack of cards that had literally had holes punched in them and they would be fed into a machine and where the holes were, like the transparent blocks here, they would uh, transmit instructions on what to do. Uh, that's the extent of my knowledge. I won't go any more than that because I don't know. But uh, I remember those punch cards. My dad used to, uh, to repair machines that used those and so... I remember playing with uh, unpunched punch cards 
and they would just have stacks and stacks of them. The other thing that this emulates is like a player pl player piano. Again, where where the holes are and where the, the the various marks are, that's where notes happen. So in many ways, this is like a player piano. So what's the plan from here? Well, I don't know. Aside from just sort of playing around with this and making it bigger, um, I don't know. Uh, the first thing that came to mind is that I could either have a... Uh, I could plan a little uh, tune for the uh, Southwest Temple and, and or just a whole show basically uh, if I flip a switch it can just set into motion a, a bunch of uh, things that would happen whatever those are doors opening and lava spewing and uh, <laughs> hounds being released and and the earth trembles and uh, I don't know what else and it plays a little a little ditty that's of course the main feature of any such ceremony would be the uh, the ditty that plays so uh, but I just wanted to show that at, at its simplest because I just think it's pretty cool um, and again thanks to all those who figured out how to do this including the folks that I mentioned earlier um, obviously their links will be in the description below so uh, be sure and check them out and uh, yeah uh, but for right now uh, oh uh, this is um, at the time I'm recording this this is uh, less than a week now before the uh, final release of the game, which is pretty exciting. Um, Minecon is right around the corner, and um, as I mentioned before, I'm not doing any of the pre-release stuff, um, so I'm just going to wait for the full version of the game, and uh, I'll get it along with everybody else. But uh, yeah, it's been actually over a year now that I've been playing the game, um, both single-player and then also multiplayer. Uh, and it's uh, it's really been fun. It's uh, let's see, I'm recording this on November 14th, and I think I started um, late September or so of last year in uh, 2010. So over a year of playing Minecraft, and you know, it's just it's just started. You know, um, there's still so much to do, and not to mention so much content to play that you know Notch is adding to it, where he's got. Uh, quests and missions and whatever else he's going to add but if nothing else this goofing around here certainly has uh lasted quite a long time it's uh, pretty neat so uh next recording will likely be in uh version one of the final release of the game because i think that's just the way the timing is going to work out and uh yeah it's going to be exciting so anyway for right now i hope that you found that interesting and as usual thanks for your uh, comments and for watching and uh, yeah i'll see you next time